Hello and welcome to the ninth video in this series of videos on Programmer Chess Engine in C. So, in this video, in the main function here you'll see I've deleted some of the code and from the previous video I've just added to our play bit board D2, D3 and D4. Right, so in this video we're going to add some methods that we'll need to be counting and identifying bits from bit boards and these are going to be things that I've well functions and an array of numbers which I've taken from the chess programming wiki so if you want to see them for yourself or learn a bit more explanation to them you can go to the chess programming wiki I think it's under bit boards and find them there but for now I'm just going to copy the functions in and paste and quickly explain what they are before showing them in use so we've got an array here of called a bit table, 64 integers inside it and then we've got two functions below here one takes, called pop bit, takes a pointer to a bit board the other one count bits just takes a bit board in and count bit should be fairly self-explanatory what it does is it counts and returns the number of bits that are one inside a bit board and pop bit does something slightly different what that does is it takes the first bit starting at the least significant bit in a bit board and returns the index that this bit was set at so we know which square that bit was set on and sets that bit then to zero and I'll show how that then works in a short while so once you've added the code for these two functions in we need to add these functions into our defs.h now here so we can use them like so with the stern keyword as well good and I'm going to add just to shorten this a little bit another couple of macros here I'm going to call it pop with a bitboard which will then take our pop bit and I'm going to call this one CNT for count like so okay so to save just leave that on the screen again so you can see and now let's go back to vice.c and see what we have here if I now do our print bit board and print our play bit board we can see what we have and now I can say int count equals of our play bit board count of our play bit board and say printf count placeholder the d and there we are and I'll also put in a new line in fact what I'll do is just to add a little bit of spacing here is put a new line in here anyway okay so let's say first of all and make this and run and here you can see we've got our bitboard printed with d2 d3 and d4 set as expected and it's telling us there are three bits very good now what we can do with pop for instance if we just run pop on this once we can take a int index equals pop and now we need to put the at because it's a pointer and now let's see which square it's taken for us and then let's also print the bit board again and now also let's get the count again it's all a bit long-winded but it's just for the example and then print the count out again and see what happens here I'll print a new line here as well so let's make this again and run okay so we've got our three and a count of three and now we've popped a bit from index 11 which is this first bit here remember it's a 0 to 63 based index printed the bit board now you can see that the bottom one of the three has disappeared and the count is two and we knew which square it was on before it was set to zero 
And you might be wondering what the application of this pop function is. Well, it's usually used when you're generating moves. So for example, we have our bit board here with three pawns. What you would do, I'll just delete all this for now, is you would say while play bit board it's not equal to naught and of course you don't even need that, you can just leave it like this. So while play bit board and we can have a say int square equals naught and we can have, we'll call it square 64. And now you can say square 64 equals pop of play bit board. And now we can say print f popped square 64 in this way and add a new line and I won't print the bit board now. Oh okay I will print the bit board actually just to have this for completeness sake. Okay, so if we were generating moves inside the program, which we will be doing in the move generator, it would be done in this fashion. We would have a variable set browse square 64, and then we would say pop the next bit on our pawn bit board, and the index would be set to square 64. We would then convert this to a square 120 index to be able to then look at other pieces that are on the board that are in our 120 array, but this is generally the way we then access each of the pawns on the bit board. So if I just make and run this, it tells me something is wrong. I haven't put the and in here. And run, and now we can see we've popped at 11, and this is the resulting bit board. We've popped at 19 plus 8 and we've popped at 27 and there are none left and we pop out of the loop or we leave the loop so there you go that in this video is very short but simple explanation of adding two of the bit board functions that we'll be using throughout the program when manipulating the pawns on the bit board the next video will take a look at adding and removing bits from the bit board in another way Thanks very much for listening, watching, taking the time. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.